Hello there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Joel back again for another installment of the story so far, the video series where I take a closer look at a comic run that's already finished up, give my thoughts and commentary, and really try and dig a little bit deeper than I normally would in my single standalone videos. And on today's show, we're going to be taking a look at Punisher Soviet, a six-issue miniseries brought to us by Garth Ennis, a scribe who of course is very near and dear to the history of the Punisher. Now, I actually had done a video on on issue one of this series a while ago, so let's have a little quick primer on that before we move forward. The Punisher was on the trail of an up-and-coming Russian crime organization. The only twist was someone was going around and killing these Russians before Frank could actually get a chance to. Stranger still, they were using tactics pretty much out of the Punisher playbook. Why, when Frank interrogates these Russian mobsters, they let it slip that they assumed they'd been fighting the Punisher this whole time when really they hadn't been. This Russian anti-Punisher managed to force a meeting between him and Frank, and you think, oh, you know, these guys are definitely going to fight each other to the death, only in what will be the first of many surprises for this series, they straight up don't. This Russian Punisher we discover is named Valery Stepanovich, and he has a long-standing grudge with the head of this Russian crime outfit, a man named Prochenko, and his attempts to go legit. As Valery tells it, and as we see throughout this Punisher Soviet series, Prochenko isn't like other gangsters the Punisher has fought before, mainly because he always keeps his hands clean and stays far away from violence as humanly possible. He's a middleman who lucked his way into being the top boss of Russian crime. He's all about delegating, like hiring a bunch of dirty cops to corner the Punisher and his new friend. And speaking of that, Frank admits that he likes this guy a lot, even though they were moments away from shooting each other before. It's been a long time since since Frank has actually trusted someone like this in the heat of battle, but there it is. As we soon discover, Valeri's own revenge quest very much mirrors Frank's own. He had been working under the radar in Russia, but when he came to the States, it was only a matter of time before he was on a collision course with the Punisher. You see, Valeri was a paratrooper during the decades-long war between Russia and Afghanistan, a conflict that Ennis as a creator and lover of war stories revisits a lot in his comic work, especially here in this story, where he very succinctly draws a number of parallels between Russia's failure in that Middle Eastern campaign to America's own failure in Vietnam and even the foreshadowed events of America's own war in Afghanistan. It turns out during that war, Pronchenko was Valeri and team's superior officer. He was a spineless pencil pusher back then too, and in the end he was responsible for leading his men into an absolute slaughterhouse of an attack. They basically strolled right into enemy territory with under-trained soldiers and out-of-date vehicles, and in the end, the Majahuddin killed them all. The Majahuddin, of course, being the group that the American government backed during that war, which would eventually end up evolving into the Taliban. Valeri and his team fought more valiantly than anyone else that day, but in the end, Valeri was taken captive. They left him alive, if only so he could carry a message back to his commanders, and that is that they were not to be trifled with. Just as one last grim exclamation point, the rest of the survivors were quite literally flayed alive. As you might have guessed, these wartime horrors broke Valeri in pretty much the same way Frank was broken during the attack on Valley Forge. He was never the same again. He became something else, something different. When Valeri returned home after the war ended, he was sickened to see the breakup of the Russian Empire and the rise of organized crime in Moscow, including his old base commander who sold him and his squad out for a quick payday. Valeri would fall into a deep, dark, vodka-soaked depression that only ended when he killed his wife while drunk driving. Frank decides to help Valeri on his mission. After all, he was going to kill these mobsters anyway. Why not have a little help while he's at it? Together, the two kidnap Prochenko's wife, which admittedly at first seems like a very unpunisher move involving a civilian who did nothing wrong. But as we discover... This lady is way more than your average trophy wife. She's actually the one who's been pushing her husband to make the move away from crime into more legitimate but still very evil kinds of business. Basically, she's the brain to the whole operation. The true irony we discover from her is that Prochenko probably wouldn't have even given any thought at all to changing his line of work if it were not for some crazy Russian punisher running around dismantling his operation anyway. Another very interesting thing about this scene is that Valeri is very different from Frank in how he treats this lady. He's super harsh and even calls her some vulgar name, something Frank doesn't even do to the worst of the enemies he's fought over the years. Maybe it's because his hurt is that much fresher that he's that much more raw. Maybe it's because Frank has been at this for so long now he just treats it like taking out the garbage. 
It was also the wife's idea, too, to move away from using undisciplined gangsters as their main source of muscle and instead invest in some proper mercenaries, something I'm sure she would live to regret as a detachment of soldiers managed to follow her and shoot up the cabin that the Punisher and all of them were hiding in, with little worry to her well-being. Before she bites it, though, she does tell the Punisher that Pronchenko is meeting that night with a big-time senator, and if there was ever a perfect time to rub him out, that would be it. Too bad for Frank and Valeri, they have a ton of space to cover in a small army of mercs, including Prochenko's own crappy sons to deal with before they can actually get there. An interesting thing, too, to note is that most of these mercenaries are American. After all, private military contractors are a major U.S. export these days, aren't they? And something that the Punisher could easily have become had his life taken a different path. It's while traipsing around the woods, Frank and Valeria continue to talk about their military service. They agree that the worst of it was seeing the regular, everyday people who always got caught in the crossfire so often. Often. I'm actually genuinely kind of shocked that despite Ennis drawing so many different parallels between so many different wars and conflicts that he didn't bring up the IRA at this point at all. He does it in every other story. Valeri goes into great detail how after that war and the collapse of the Soviet Empire that Russia was stolen out from under him by middle managers who never shed a drop of blood in their life yet ordered oceans of it spilled on their behalf. And that how in the intervening years things have only gotten worse for Russia as even more evil powers of seized control. Again, how topical. Our heroes manage to capture Prochinko's three sons and are forced into a game of cat and mouse with a helicopter gunship. Valeri goes to grab one of the bigger guns himself and in the end sacrifices himself to bring the chopper down. The Punisher wonders for a moment if he should shoot the man just to put him out of his misery, but decides not to at the last minute. This of course leads us into the big finale wherein the Punisher must finish Valeri's revenge quest on his own. He even picks up his fallen comrades AK-47 and uses it to execute Prochenko's three sons. And it's of course taking lots of time to talk about the mechanical marvel that is the weapon itself. I don't understand a lot about guns, but I know Ennis knows his stuff, and damn if it isn't cool to hear him talk about it. Now what exactly is Prochenko's ultimate goal? While well, you may not be surprised to discover that he's funneling his ill-gotten gain into a powerful U.S. Senator's re-election campaign, knowing that doing so will give him a pawn for life and more influence over future elections. Again, how topical, I wonder what they could possibly be referencing here. I mean, it's not like there was a big news story not too long ago about Russian oligarchs getting involved in American politics or anything, right? The Punisher opines that despite being in a world of so many colorful supervillain types, the truly evil people he has to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis like these two conspiring to commit high treason are always the most dull, sad, and unspectacular. It's here too I really gotta take my hat off to the artist of this miniseries, Jason Burroughs, much like Ennis's other collaborator, the dearly departed Steve Dillon. Burroughs does an excellent job capturing human ugliness in the way few other artists are able to do. Perhaps it's good in that case that Valeri didn't live long enough to see his monster again in the flesh. Frank does, however, imagine a punishment that would be fitting Prochenko's crime. Fifth Company was skinned alive because of what he did, so the lazy oligarch who never broke a sweat a day in his life should be forced to skin his senator meal ticket. He tries, but mostly he just cries, throws up, and then wets himself. Again, a recurring theme in a lot of Ennis' work is showing how the most evil people among us are often the most pathetic. In a very moving final panel, Frank goes and has himself his first drink since the 70s, a glass of vodka in memory of Valeri, a man he knew only for a short amount of time, but who the Punisher understood all too well, a man shaped by war and tragedy, crying out for justice in a cold, uncaring world. Truly his spiritual brother-in-arms, Valeri got an ending to his story, sad though it might be, but Frank's just keeps on keeping on, doesn't it? And so there you have it, everyone, Punisher Soviet, another take no prisoners, balls to the wall, brutal as hell Punisher story from the master of Punisher stories. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, why not sound out in the comments section down below. Tell me what other comic series that's been completed would you like to see me cover on the show in future, and I might just do that. So until then, everyone, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye.